An explosion or fire on board ship can have devastating consequences. The ship and the full ship's company may be at risk. When the ship is brought to emergency stations, everyone has a job to do. The first priority is always the ship. The damage must be contained, assessed, and repaired. Each man reports to a predetermined area. Personnel arrive at HQ-1. The damage control team will monitor and coordinate all aspects of the emergency. Communications are established. Reports begin to flow. With the med aid dead, the first aid team must carry on. The attack team assembles in the cafeteria. Their equipment and breathing apparatus is stored here. The attack team leader briefs his team. They are reminded of procedures and their operation is planned. The first aid team reports to the wardroom. Within minutes, the wardroom is converted into a casualty clearing and treatment facility. With the med aid dead, the first aid team is now completely in charge. The team at HQ-1 tracks the progress of the attack team and relays information to the bridge. The attack team proceeds to the wardroom flat. The door to the metadyne compartment is intact and cool. They advance into the gun bay. The interior is smoky, but there is no apparent fire. Meanwhile, in the wardroom, Chief Petty Officer Hooper briefs the first aid team. They review the types of injuries they could expect from an explosion, burns, shrapnel, 
asphyxia. Get him out of there. Within moments, the first casualty is discovered. It is the responsibility of the attack team to locate and remove casualties to the fresher air of the flats. They will hand over to the casualty clearing team. The casualty clearing team must act quickly. They must avoid interfering with the attack team and their equipment. And they must spree the area to receive the next casualty. Extensive first aid is impossible. However, this casualty is in respiratory emergency. Before clearing him, they apply pressure and position an airtight dressing over the sucking chest wound. The casualty clearing team knows that there are other casualties. There is neither the time nor the space to maneuver a casualty onto a stretcher. The best they can do is hand over to the first aid team as quickly as possible. Chief Hooper and the first aid team are ready. The casualty is conscious but severely injured. There is a penetrating chest wound and multiple pieces of shrapnel embedded in the abdomen. The vital signs are called out to ordinary seaman Lion, who relays the information to HQ-1. Maintain pressure while the airtight dressing is taped in place. The shrapnel cannot be removed, but the embedded objects are protected with ring pads. This will stabilize the object until he can be evacuated to medical aid. Meanwhile, a second casualty is removed from the gun bay. He is in extreme pain and has a major bleeding wound. The casualty clearing team apply a pressure dressing to help control bleeding, and they remove him at once to the wardroom. There are other injuries to Abel Seaman Q, which will be dealt with later. For now, he must be removed to make room for the next casualty. Do not attempt to remove blood-soaked dressings. Add more dressings and tie securely to maintain pressure over the wound. This casualty is conscious but is already suffering from shock. Look at him. He is pale and sweaty. Skin is bluish. One of the team monitors, Abel Seaman Q, who has been positioned so that he is inclined to his injured side. A sling provides support and will help him breathe more comfortably. The attack team has removed a third casualty. It looks serious. External injuries are profound. A deep laceration at the neck and massive abdominal injuries. A quick assessment shows no breathing and no pulse. A non-breathing casualty always has priority. Always be prepared to adapt to changing priorities. The table is cleared to receive him.
Although these injuries appear fatal, a thorough assessment is made. Look and listen for breathing. Feel for any pulse. It may be very faint. Watch for signs of responsiveness. In this case, the injuries are extremely severe and there are no vital signs. Lion, bring me over the tag. We lost him. If you conclude there is nothing you can do, don't waste time. Other casualties need your help. Tag him and move him out of the way. The attack team has established that there is no apparent hull damage. Inspection of adjacent compartments have located a fourth casualty. He is unconscious, but breathing. Chief Pooper suspects a neck injury. He directs his assistant to prepare a cervical collar. It is an excellent precaution to immobilize the head and neck before the casualty regains consciousness. The injury to this casualty's eye is severe. When he regains consciousness, pain will be intense. The only first aid possible is to protect the sight. Avoid any pressure on the wound. Covering both eyes will minimize eye movement and reduce the risk of further aggravating the injury. The casualty clearing team has now joined the first aiders in the wardroom. They continue to monitor casualties being especially alert for any change in a casualty's condition. They check and recheck vital signs and assess the tightness of bandages and dressings. Chief Hooper now has a reasonable picture of the situation. He knows that there are other injuries which must be looked at again. He directs his team to continue first aid for secondary injuries. The burns particularly need attention. Back in the gun bay, the attack team has located another casualty, pinned under debris in the smoke-filled compartment. The clearing team is alerted. The casualty is not breathing but has a pulse. The firefighter immediately begins AR while he waits for the clearing team to arrive. The unconscious casualty is placed in the recovery position on the deck as the table is cleared to receive the incoming casualty. Chief Hooper continues AR. Restoring breathing is always the priority. The first aid team continues to attend to all casualties. 
Where possible, casualties should be encouraged to care for themselves. Shock may be present. It is essential to keep them warm. Okay, okay. When a casualty okay. regains consciousness, he will often gag or vomit. He should be placed in the recovery position to prevent choking on fluids. Tilt the head back to ensure an open airway. The condition of some casualties will improve. Others may deteriorate. Abel Seaman Q is having increased difficulty breathing. This is a respiratory emergency. Act quickly. The tape seal has come loose and the dressing is no longer airtight. Reseal the dressing securely. The casualty will breathe easier within a few minutes. Your ability to respond promptly to the shifting priorities in an emergency situation will do much to preserve life, prevent further injury, and to promote recovery. On board ship, any accident is a very serious matter. The ship carries tons of flammable fuel, and on a destroyer, large quantities of explosives. Fire can spread through ductwork and ventilation shafts. Any structural damage must be immediately assessed and repaired. The ship's company has been trained to respond to any emergency. Take charge. The ship is brought to emergency station. HQ-1 is activated. Qualified medical aid may not always be available. The casualty clearing and first aid teams are mobilized. The attack team is equipped and briefed. Survey the scene and assess hazards. The area is confined until an assessment of fire can be made. Make the area safe for yourself and others. Gases can build up in ship's compartment and the hatch must be cracked properly by the attack team to knock down any fire. Locate all casualties. They must be moved at once to the relative safety and fresher air of the flat. They are handed over to the casualty clearing team. Assess injuries. The chief first aider makes the assessment on each casualty and organizes appropriate first aid. He can do much to control bleeding, promote breathing, ease pain, and slow the progress of shock. Organize priorities of first aid. The chief must decide which injuries on which casualty should be treated first. With some conditions, such as burns, the chief can only stabilize the casualty until he can be handed over to medical aid. The first aid team can provide comfort and support. Once each casualty has been prioritized, the first aid team can treat other injuries such as fractures and minor wounds. Keep warm. Beware that shock will increase with time. Monitor casualties until they can be evacuated to medical aid. Be alert and prepared to respond to changing priorities. Your understanding of the priority action approach, your control of the situation, and your ability to make judgments and assess priorities can do much to preserve life, prevent further injury, and to promote recovery. Thank <laughs> you.